But anyway, we've talked about uh, your early years here in the Pioneer Valley, but most of your work has taken place outside the Pioneer Valley, yes. in a sense. Yes. Uh, but you're back here now, uh, because um, you know the fact that you you know that you had a lot of this early success really doesn't match up with what you had as later success, <laughs> in my mind. Mm, yeah. You know, and, and and maybe in somebody's look at your resume or something like that, mm -hmm. or it said. Oh, you did that. You did that. <laughs> so you know another. You know, so you actually uh, really even built even further on your experiences here with community TV, in that what you did later on. I know you went to California. You were in the Bay Area for a while. Yep. Uh, you uh, you know, but I mean, your involvement with shows that I'll just mention. You know that you know you have. We were heavily involved with a show called This Old House. Hmm. And uh, you know, just about everybody would know that show. Right. It's still on. Yeah. Yeah. I still watch it. Yeah. You know, if it comes up, if I'm you know scrolling through the channels, I see it. Oh, yeah. I think I'll watch that for a while. Yeah. You know, and uh, then there's a you know a subsequent one to after this old house or something like that. Ask this old house. Yeah. 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 But then even more in, uh, interesting was that you were asked to start uh, a separate show called this new house. Yeah. Uh, for what DIY, DIY networks, right? So how did all of that come about, and what was all, all that like? Well, just go back just a little bit to get me from here to California to Boston. '89, uh, uh, I left to to, to San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to you know, just it just seemed like a, a fun idea to do. Yeah. Uh, there, I worked. I probably did the best work I've ever done in terms of the, the quality. It was a very high end uh, corporate video and commercials, uh, a lot of it shot on film because it was a better look. And where I was working for uh, a lot of Silicon Valley companies, so there's big, big budgets, great, great crews there. It was amazing, and living in San Francisco was amazing. This is the 90s. Mm -hmm. I also co-owned a production company, and we had the Gap account. We did the lion's share of their video marketing. And I did projects for Levi's as well, who were also based in San Francisco at that time. What keeps it all focused is a definite matter of style. But eventually, San Francisco changed. The dot-com implosion sort of uh, messed up sort of uh, the flow of work. Um, and it was time for a change, and I went and moved to Boston. I have family there. My mom was was there, and she was later in her years, so it was a good good place for me to be. And uh, I was like, "What am I going to do now?" I'm like, you know, 50 years old at that point, and I'm tra I'm moving cities, mm -hmm. changing my career. So uh, that was it. Was an interesting challenge to to kind of get back on the horse there, because uh, I was like, "What do they do here in Boston? What's happening?" And I, you know, they do television. There's yeah. a lot of TV on of GBH and so on. So I I got to know the people at uh, this whole house, and uh, made some little short things for them while I was looking for other work. I got some work at a production company called Powder House, and they they were in Somerville, Davis Square. They made History Channel shows, National Geographic, Animal Planet, all these. They were making that kind of television. I hadn't done that before, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, let's try this. You know, they, they let me in. I I showed them that I knew what I was doing, and. Uh, uh, didn't know how to do that part, but I could I can learn. So mm -hmm. it was very interesting to to have that much experience at that point, you know, 25 years or so of, of you know pretty hardcore experience, and being the new guy and just sort of not knowing what I'm doing and trying it out, but you know, arcing stories, writing stories, figuring out for television. This is commercial television, commercial cable. So think about the History Channel, where you've got advertising breaks. You know, you've got to you got to do these segments that you know come up, and they got to tease the mm -hmm. next thing. You got to keep right. people in their chair. You got to do all this yep. architecture to sort of <laughs> keep people there. You know, I was like, oh, this is crazy, but really interesting. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, so let's try that. My first opportunity there was to make a pilot to try to get a History Channel series. Here's part of what that looked like. You want to know where your trash goes? Hi, I'm Daniel Wilson. I grew up working in my dad's body shop. I got a PhD in robotics. And my whole life, I've been obsessed with how stuff works. North Americans throw out 300 million tons of garbage every year. That averages out to about four and a half pounds a person every day. 
Today we're talking about your garbage. Where does it all go? So I did a bunch of that stuff, um, and I really liked it. And then uh, I got a call from this whole house where they're thinking about making this new show called This New House because it was with uh, the DIY network had been airing this old house on their channel as part of their programming for years. So there was a natural relationship there already. Coming up, imagine taking the bones of an old factory and using it to build your new house. Look at that truss. You can't go and buy these things. That's magical. Plus, we'll show you how to squeeze some heat and some dollars out of your winter's chill. I heard that you can pull heat out of this delicious ice cream. We're going coast to coast. To find the latest and greatest. And coolest stuff for your house. I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Amy Matthews. And this is This New House. I got brought in to do this show, and it was really different than this old house thing. You know, th this old house created the home improvement genre, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to make a show under their umbrella yeah. uh, to make this show about um, new building techniques and new, new building ideas. This is 2007. Green building, you know, stuff like that. Very different than the, the regular show. And it was fascinating because I had just come from this really in, rich environment of making this kind of uh, commercial cable television. We made a, two years of this of this show, This New House. So insulation that's made of air. Okay, I guess I'm still on board. But this stuff, well, it looks like no insulation I've ever seen. In my left, I can feel the ice cube. Um, feels like an ice cube, it's cold. And in my right, I pretty much just feel the weight. Yeah. I can barely feel the temperature of that ice cube. And if you look closely, this one is already melting the ice cube whereas the other one is not. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. You know, really mind-blowing new technology that was right on the cusp of, uh, with this sort of energy-efficient sort of thrust. Because mm -hmm. finally, America was starting to wake up to the fact that we build crappy houses for so long. <laughs> and we got to do better stuff. So it was very innovative on that level. And I shot it very, very uh, aggressively, let's say. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that freaked everybody out at this old house. <laughs> they were like, who is this guy? Oh my God, he's ruining our brand. <laughs> the sky is falling. But I got, that was my first Emmy nomination, uh, national Emmy nomination for, you know, for, direct, for directing uh -huh. for that show. Then the, the, the director job opened up at this old house. Um, so I, I started this old house, did uh, 10 years of directing that. I directed over 400 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House combined. A lot has changed over the years. But level is still level. Hot is still on the left. 90 degrees is still square. And it's still better to do it right the first time. Welcome back to This Old House. My, my friends in California that I uh, still know and knew at the time, I told them I got the job at this whole house. They're like, what? <laughs> you, you're the director of this whole house? I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a good gig. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's inter I mean, again, everything is interesting. You know, it's, like, it's not like you have an attitude after you do so many years of stuff. You just, you look at everything as like a challenge. You say like, oh, I've done this before. It's going to be challenging. And it yeah, was. Yeah. This whole house was a really, really difficult thing to figure out. I sort of changed the whole look of the show. I took the challenge very seriously. It was like, it's a proud brand. You know, it's got, it's got many, many years. Now it's at 45 years or something like that, or close to it. Um, it's, 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 it's working. Why are you trying to change it type of thing, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing filmmaker things to make it better. Don't, I'm not trying to get in the movie. I, I was smart enough to say like this, I'm just gonna do my job and make you look better. And um, I think I did. And um, over time, we did a lot of things. I did specials for History Channel. So if we are talking about American plumbing, we've clearly come to the right place, right? A place that's got the largest collection of outhouses from the 1800s. All these buildings are from the 19th century, around 1830 to 1850. And what an outhouse is, it's a small wooden building. Yeah. It has a hole that's dug in the ground. Now let's, 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 what are we going to call it? We're going to talk, what, doing your business, going poop, what's poop? The, I don't know. Right, let's, let's just get one that or two. Now we're not going to call it. We did a two hour special for the History Channel 
about the hidden history in your house, tracing the history of plumbing, water, refrigeration, heating. Very interesting and also shot and directed more like what I did for this new house. I was executive producer yeah. on that as well. And we have to pack it in really tight or it'll melt. Never look at your house the same way again. Apprentice. Noun. And I did a lot of digital video during that time while I was directing both shows at this old house. Eight foot high, sliding glass doors. I was centrally involved in trying to make this legendary brand that had the word old in it relevant in the late 2010s. This experience has definitely changed my life. We are Generation Next. So I was directing 50 two episodes of TV a year. Mm -hmm. So I did about six years of the two shows and then I did another five or whatever of, the, of just this whole house as a freelancer. Yeah. And with that extra time, I picked up some work directing at America's Test Kitchen. An egg yolk contains 50% water, 16% protein, and 34% fat. All emulsions. All delicious. And produced and directed a variety of other commercial productions. We are Framingham. We are Framingham. A beautiful mosaic. Many hopes. Many dreams. Learning to come together. As an inclusive community. You know, given my background, wanted to do more. I wanted to do other yeah, things. Yeah. So that's when I started to make short documentaries um, and got back into shooting again. Um, I had sort of gotten away from shooting and editing, um, which is how I started. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get back to my roots and made a couple of, with that extra time that I had now, because I was only doing one show, I started making short documentaries. They're machines. They're also typewriters, but they are machines. I'm just used to calling them machines. Just the way I think, because I'm a repairman. And I got my old friend Avery Sharp to play bass to make the soundtrack for that film. We are first and foremost a repair shop here. That's our main mission, is to clean and fix the machines up and we send them back out there for another life. It was interesting because we were doing a show in Arlington, Massachusetts uh, for this whole house. And what, every time we went to do a new, sh new, a new uh, house or a new s series, we'd look at the town, we'd look at the sort of the, what are, what are the other stories happening in this place that we can color it in for other, you know, part of the segments. And one of the things I came across when we were in Arlington was this little typewriter shop, the typewriter repair shop. This little tiny box of a building on Mass Ave, right out of, right over the line from Cambridge. And um, I was sort of thinking I could propose to do something with that typewriter shop. It's you know vintage. We do vintage. How you know we do stuff. But I said you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give that away. I want I want that one for myself. <laughs> I don't want to give it to the show. Yeah, yeah. They'll make a ham sandwich out of it. I'm gonna do it my way. Right. So I contacted the guy there, Tom Furrier, who ran the um, typewriter repair shop, and it turned into my first uh, short documentary. Uh, the typewriter repairman, which did very well on the, on the festival circuit around the world, yeah. um, and it, to this day, it's just a it's a lovable film because it's just it's it. He's fixing typewriters yeah. in, in this digital age. Right. Right. The, the story itself is is, is just kind of hard, hard to imagine, but he was as busy as he's ever been, because people, young kids, are coming back into yeah. the typewriter That's shop. True. Yeah. Yeah. Because they've never seen a typewriter. They've never seen a single-purpose machine, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, and he and these kids were fascinated with these things that you could only type on. Mm -hmm. You couldn't like call your friend, or you couldn't, you know, <laughs> be on the internet. Right. It was just like that's all you could do. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like it was fascinating to these kids, and they're buying these refurbished typewriters, and he was booming. Uh, yeah. No, there was a guy in Amherst who had a typewriter shop for many years. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Just the uh, same thing, tiny little store. Yep. You know, it was like, you know, maybe eight feet wide or something like right. that, you know, yeah. Filled with typewriters. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. And he just kept at it. You know, he was, he, he, every year you go, he's still there? Yeah. You know, because, you know, somebody he had business. He, he wouldn't have been there if he didn't have business. Yeah. 
There's writers out there that still yeah yeah that prefer insist that just even if it's just one finger because they, they, they yeah, write yeah. better on a typewriter. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And I made two other documentaries at that time, a short doc on a working class DJ. Uh, play a record for me. Sure. Um, okay, the needle's on the record. I play records for a living. I'm just really a working class DJ. Not everyone's looking for a DJ like me. Guys, it's a grind. You hustle and get it done. I mean, the hustle is real all the time. And a PBS Hour special documentary produced through American Public Television called Second Wind on a famous sailor turned nautical photographer, Anna Vanderwall, who was based in Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah, so, the, I, so I started to do stuff to sort of get back into my roots that I was talking about earlier. And then one of the last things I did in the Boston area was do a YouTube series with a builder from Rhode Island who was uh, one of the main characters on the This Old House team. Uh, I did a whole 11-part series, a uh, YouTube series with him, um, kind of in the way that I wanted to make This Old House. One man band did everything. Pretty interesting project called Sawdust. Should I wear my hair down? Here's a clip from one of my favorite segments. And I, this GoPro is recording. Okay. Featuring an all-women crew, Led by Cassie and her two best yeah, friends. Chill. Come here. All right. Whenever you're ready, we're good. My name is Cassie Collinson. I am owner of Cassie's Cans Inc. Uh, we do portable toilet restroom rentals. This here is Kaiser, and I, I have another German Shepherd on the floor. His name is Ozzy, and both of my boys come to work with me every single day. <laughs> um, so eventually, I guess you did leave uh, the Boston scene, you know, what you were doing there because you're living out here now. Yep. I've seen your website, so you still do uh, video work for yep. clients. You got a lot of clients over the years. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing today? Well, I, I took a little bit of a break. I, you know, leaving Boston um, after all that activity, it was a very, very busy time uh, in Boston. And I came here and, you know, there's, there's no real, like in Boston, there's, there's a lot of industry. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of videos to be made for companies or, right. or television shows to work for or whatever. Well, that's not happening here. There's, there's universities and farms, <laughs> you know. And it was, I'm really kind of retired. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was like, you know what? Um, you know, I, it was just a time to take a break a little bit and kind of reevaluate the valley is felt like a warm hug coming back here honestly mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. i've always had fond memories of it I, I i the the feeling i got when i first moved there I was living in, in amherst all by myself down main street that same feeling i felt when i came back here it's like it's a it's a nice it's a friendly place people mm -hmm. are, are are nice here mm -hmm. they're uh they're they're open and um it's not as like kind of competitive as as the big city <laughs> right. and it's not as crowded and it's not you're not stuck in traffic and all these things so it's been a wonderful time for me to sort of reassess like what do i want to do with yeah. all this information and, and skill set that i have and i still right. love the the video making so recently i've done a couple of projects with my old friend john riley aka johnny memphis here with a get out the vote video that we shot at the corn maze in Sunderland. We'll come on all you American voters, start your engines and rev your motors. Country's having a big election. Just about time to make the selection. Now here comes the main event. We're gonna pick a president and it's one, two, three. Who are you voting for? Don't tell me you'll hesitate. I also filmed his band, the Johnny Memphis Band at the Three County Fair. And I'm currently involved with some information and promotional videos in support of urban planning and redesign for Northampton's Main Street. 
These are the center left turn lanes. So you can see we still have one lane in each direction. Helping explain and give context to making streets safe for everyone, which will lead to positive economic impacts for downtown Northampton. This is Main Street in Northampton. One of the things you'll notice right away, or maybe not, is that there's no telephone poles downtown. That's because all the infrastructure that would be carried on the telephone poles is buried under Main Street to keep it safe and protected. So I've been keeping busy with some civic-oriented projects. Um, the, the thing we haven't talked about is that the whole time I've been doing this, all those years, I've always been involved with music. Yeah. And I had a radio show at MUA back in the uh, late 70s. Uh -huh. And um, I've always been into, in, into sort of progressive music, jazz particularly, but other, other forms of music that are sort of on the cutting edge. Uh, through radio, and then I've, I've always been DJing yeah. and uh, a vinyl collector. I've always had vinyl. Mm -hmm. So I've always kept the, 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 the music thing happening sort of as a side hustle, you know, or mm -hmm. just an interest, you know. Mm -hmm. I never, and so in San Francisco, I was able to DJ out more, a little bit more, and there's a really interesting yeah. uh, vibe going on in, in, in San Francisco during the 90s for, for music. And carried that into Boston with me, and it's always been active with it. But one of the first things I did when I got here was uh, I learned about uh, Valley Free Radio, which yeah. is the, uh, the, yeah, the community radio station here in Florence, Massachusetts, of which right. I know you just got a show, and right. congratulations. Yeah. Um, Alphabet Soup. Alphabet Soup. Yeah, cool. And I said, I'm going to get a radio show. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Planetary Hi-Fi. I'm your host, Selector Tomas, with you for two hours tonight, playing eclectic soulful sounds from around the globe. We're here every week, 7 to 9 p.m. Thursdays. I said, well, let me just apply and see what happens. What I like to say is I, I scratched my production itch by making a weekly show. Because mm -hmm. it's been a lot of the same skill set. You, you got a deadline. Yeah. You got to make something. Yeah. You got to make it as interesting as you possibly can, yeah. but you can't fuss over it too much. You just got to get it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the stakes are low at <laughs> XOJ, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's not like being broken, but it does go on around the world on, on yeah. the web. Yeah. That is very cool. So it's a low power. It's the LP stands for low power. And it's, but you know, you can hear it all the way over in the Hadley and Amherst. It's a pretty, the signal is pretty good now. Um, so I'm very happy. I was very happy to finally just get into something and get back to my radio thing, get back on the mic. It's a different different kind of thing because I've been sort of behind the scenes all my career, but now I'm back on the mic a little bit and presenting and producing a, sh a show, a two-hour show. So that was my immediate sort of uh, production itch scratch thing yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I was doing as I surveyed the area to see, meet other filmmakers, meet people that are doing film and video here. Uh, video mostly, and um, just seeing what opportunities are around, and trying to also connect with, uh, you know, local, be, get involved locally. You know, again, like this station, all other cable stations, XOJ, community media. Right. You know, there's other things here in in this valley. Uh, I think this was one of the great things about Pioneer Valley is that there's there's a you can go to meetings and you can get in and you can be and you can be heard. It's not as backed up as like in Boston and San Francisco or wherever. It's it's a place that you can actually participate and make a difference. It's like I, I look around and I go, what what do I know how to do? I know how to do, ride a bike. I know how to <laughs> spin records and I know how to make you know television and video and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, uh, how do I? How can I help? And so that's kind of my, my mindset right now. There's not a lot of work here in terms of video jobs like mm -hmm. I'm used to. It's like right. the, uh, you know, the univer I would love to teach. Um, the universities would be a, a great opportunity for me, but I'm not, that seems like a hard, I've been trying a little bit, but it seems like a hard road to get, get to where I would need to, to, to do that, to meet the right people and so on and so forth. Just kind of seeing where I can fit in. Yeah. Well, that really fits in well with my idea here of having this show called Pioneer Valley Life, mm -hmm. because it's it is a community that goes all the way from the Connecticut border to the Vermont border. Yep. Really, and uh, you know, left and right of the river, you know, there's a lot going on here, even in some of the small towns. Yep. Um, but 
No, I think, and I just want to give you, you know, a, a, applaud your efforts here because this is a regular show. Mm -hmm. You do it, you know what I mean? It's like, I think it's important that things happen on a regular basis. Not not like clockwork, but enough that yes, people yeah, can count yeah. on seeing another new one sometime right. soon. Yeah. I think it's extreme, extremely valuable. It's, you're volunteering your time, you know, uh, good on you for, for, <laughs> for doing this. Yeah. yeah. No, at this stage in my life, you know, it keeps me going, you know, between this and the radio show. The radio, I was a DJ in the mid-90s uh, over in Amherst when that station just started over there. Oh, cool. And I always liked it. I loved it, but I had to get out of it after a couple of years, after a couple of years for health reasons, actually. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, when I heard about XOJ, I went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wow, I could do that again. And that's, I pre-record my show at home. Yep. Uh, you know, because that's best for me. Yes. And they say, that's okay. We can do that. No yep. problem. And yeah, like today, I'm you know I'm working on my show today. You know, so I uh, know it's fun, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, you're yeah. doing a different types of so different types right. of music and so on. Yeah, because it's basically you know I'm playing my favorite songs. Right. You know, so I have no no uh, format to follow. Yeah. You know, it's whatever I want to play. Yeah. You know, so you know th that's great. You know, and I like it. You know, I you know. Uh, you know, I enjoy listening to my own show. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. My, my joke is that I'm, I'm playing my vinyl collection. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I am. I only do an hour. That's all I can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's plenty. <laughs> right. But anyway, yeah, so uh, it's been great. This has been a great show. I really appreciate you being here today, Thomas. Yeah. And uh, I know that uh, uh, in the production and the final cut, uh, you know, Jackson will add in a, a, a link to your website okay. so people can find out more about what you've done, what you do, et cetera. Right. And, uh, you know, and then hopefully, you know, people will just say, gee, I want to contact that guy. Well, that you would know, be nice. I well, never knew that was <laughs> that guy was in, here in town. You know, that, that's exactly who I need to talk to. Well, that's great. You, you, know? you provide a nice public yeah. service for people. So that, uh, you know, like you say, you want to teach. Well, you know. There's probably a lot of guys out there who want to be students, mm. somebody like yourself. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, men and women, young, there's so many college kids, and then people who call, you know, they graduate, but they stick around because right. they like the area for one reason or another. Yeah. And the joke is always, well, you know, you, you know, I just spent, uh, you know, $200,000 on my uh, daughter's education, and she's serving coffee at the local coffee house. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's because she wants to be here, you know, and right. maybe she'll end up doing something more, but right. she thinks the opportunity is here. You know, I think that that's what's great about the Valley is that there's the expectations in the, in the, in the big cities. There's almost too much stress to be better. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. it's sort of yeah. Re re yeah. refreshing to be here. Uh, not that I'm promoting, you know, minimum wage or anything, right, but right. at the same time, the quality of life matters. And I think people are, it's finally yeah, catching yeah. up with people. Yeah. And for me at this point in my life, yeah. returning to the Valley has been great because yeah. it's, 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 like I said earlier, it's like a warm hug. It's like, yeah. Yeah. it just yeah. feels like uh, a nice place to sort of right. be. Yeah. And there's a lot of support, especially for older folks, uh, which I'm uh, very much a member of. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, and, you know, and again, I'm going to uh, say places like this still exist. Yeah. You know, uh, a quality studio here. Yeah. Uh, folks, uh, I don't know what camera if I look at a camera, but come, and, come down to <laughs> East Hampton uh, E-Media. E check this place out. Uh, say hi to Jackson and uh, Jeff and um, make something because it's yeah. available. Because the equipment is here. It's all here. Come and get it. Yep. <laughs> Well, thanks very much. Thank I you. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, this has been another episode of Pioneer Valley Life. I'm James Sullivan, and we're here at East Hampton E Media. And come back again. <laughs>